Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to give you an intro to four new APIs hooks React has introduced in its latest version, React 18. And also an overview of how the strict mode now works in the development mode. First, I should mention that these APIs will only be available if we upgrade React and use the new root API. If you don't know how to upgrade to React 18, check this video. This new root API enables the new Conqueror render and adds out-of-the-box improvements. Also, if you don't know what Conqueror render is, check this short video. This new root API enables the new Conqueror render and adds out-of-the-box improvements. Ok, let's quickly go through some of them. First, we have Use Transition and Start Transition. Transitions allow us to split a state update into an urgent and non-urgent part, the transition part. The way it works is, React will interrupt the transition state updates and update the urgent updates first. We can use Use Transition to tell React what parts of our code is not urgent and therefore has lower priority. So React will only execute it once the other actions are done. For example, if we have a filter component to filter down the products list, we can wrap the set state function with the hook use transition to tell React to prioritize other operations over rendering the new products list. This means that the user can select an option from the filter dropdown, this component will be updated straight away, React won't need to block the browser from updating the dropdown and will then continue rendering the updated product list. This helps us to provide visual feedback to the user for an urgent update, so the user knows that the website is not broken, even if the list takes a bit longer to render. Transitions will help us to keep the app more responsive. Use the fair value works similarly, but it's mainly useful when we work with external libraries that we don't have control over the set state. Only kicks in when the user has a bad internet connection. In the same way, let us postpone the render of a non-origin part of the tree. React will delay the render until the first origin render is reflected on the screen. The deferred render is interactable and doesn't block user input. React has also introduced a hook called useID that we can use it to generate unique IDs on the client and the server. Really useful for component libraries that need unique IDs for accessibility. React also recommends any state management library to use use sync external store to make it easier for them to integrate their library with React. I'm putting together a video where I will dive deep into how some of these new APIs work. From what I have seen so far, I think use transition and use the fair value are my favorites. So please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to don't miss my next video. Today we talked about new features that React has introduced to improve the performance out of the box. But not only that, React is thinking in the future. One of the features that they want to introduce in the, in the next version is to being able to remove a section of the UI while keeping the state, especially in these components that get rendered conditionally. That's why from this version, the React 18, they are laying the groundwork. This is going to be really beneficial for components that render uh, conditional, as I said, like if we have tabs. At the moment, every time we unmount a component, the state of that component gets lost. The only way to prevent this is by using state management libraries like Redux or using the use context or higher order components. So what React wants is to give us a way where instead of completely unmounting these components, we could just hide them and preserve the state. Unmounting and remounting trees using the same component state as before. So this will work in this way. React will intentionally render the component twice by mounting it, unmounting it, unmounting it again to prevent unsafe side effects. So in this version, React already simulates this mounting and unmounting, but only in this development mode. So this is how it works. React mounts the component, layout effects are created and effect effects are created. 
then React simulates a mounting the component by calling a cleanup function inside use effect or component will amount. Layout effects are destroyed, effects are destroyed. Then React simulates mounting the component with the previous state by calling use effect or component did mount. So layout effect setup code runs, effect setup code runs. Thank you everyone, please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when my next video comes out. Also, leave me a comment in the description box below, regardless which of this new feature is your favorite.